God bless you. Thank you so much for that selection. I'd like for you, if you will, if you would turn with me to a very familiar, well-celebrated passage of Scripture in the Bible, a passage of Scripture that I have found myself this past week and then early this morning constantly quoting a portion of it. The book of Ephesians chapter 6 and the 10th verse says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I found myself using that middle quote, be strong in the Lord. Thank you very much. That word has constantly been sounded throughout this past week. Trouble is everywhere. Crisis people are facing every day. I've prayed. I've called myself doing what counsel I could give. And the best counsel is be strong in the Lord. Even this morning, prior to my walking into this sanctuary, be strong in the Lord. When I step out of this pulpit and move toward the remaining of this day, some point of the day, I'll have to repeat once again, be strong in the Lord. Amen. So since I'm going to give that advice, The words yet ring in my mind, my heart, my spirit. Some of you are here today looking for a word from the Lord, a word that will encourage you, that will spiritually sustain you through the crisis of your life, And all I can say with assurance is be strong in the Lord. When we look at this passage of scripture, we look at it and we continue to read it all the way through. And I believe we'll read it from verse 10 to verse 18. It talks about, and I'm, I would probably draw in some of the ideals of, of what we are battling and through our crisis and how we wrestle with uh, uh, the unseen forces of life, how we struggle within our flesh and our own blood and how uh, we are contended with person, uh, principalities and powers and rulers and and darkness all over the world, and spiritual wickedness, and then our own personal issues. But it starts with be strong in the Lord. I was reading a book last night on, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, uh, Skevington Woods. And in this book of Skeveton Woods, he says all the resources the Christian need are drawn from Christ's mighty power. All right. All right. We depend on so much in life. We depend on so many different sources and resources. But the best help is be strong. 
not in our own feebleness because we grow weary, we become tired, we become frustrated. But the Bible says, be strong in the Lord. What that says is, that saying to us is for us, uh, is calling us to steadfastness. How do you remain steadfast, unmovable, under the trial, remain steadfast? Because apart from Jesus Christ, we will fail. The whole universe is a battleground. Paul's words about how to handle the struggles of life. He shares with us, be strong in the Lord. I want that to stick, I want it to ring within your minds is because we cater to so much that bets for us. But Paul says the power of God gives us stability. And it gives us a sure footing that we are able to travel rough terrain. We are able to pass over mountains of excruciating pain. We are able to travel through the desert of fear and terror without falling out. Be steadfast. Have yourself anchored upon a sure foundation. And how do I do it, Brother Blaylock? You do it through faith. Faith is the shield that guards the believer against all attacks invisible and visible. It's stuff coming at us sometimes that we don't know where it's coming from. That stuff coming at us sometimes we know it's coming before it, 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 it strikes us. Visible and invisible. But guess what? We are guarded. That's what I like. That's what I like about uh, uh, Skeveton Woods. Words. He says, we are, through the scripture now, we are, we are guarded by God because we have his divine protection. And not only do we have his divine protection, we have his ultimate deliverance. Sometimes we just have to ask that we find ourselves leaning and, and uh, to God's will. We know what we want. We know what we would like to see happen. But what is God's will? Sometimes we ask for stuff 
out of selfishness. But let me share with you that God's will is perfect. And everything that we really need is wrapped up in God's will. God speaks to us in three ways. Let me share this with you. He speaks to us through his word. He speaks to us through his spirit. He speaks to us through prayer. Get you some word. Listen to God's spirit as God speaks to us and pray. I ain't going to say learn how to pray, just pray. Because the Bible says that when we pray, you don't have to try to polish eloquence and you don't have to articulate to God. If you need help, let me tell you how to ask for it. You ready? Help! God can take that word from you, that word through the aid of his Holy Spirit, God will bless you with that one word, help! Because there's more in that request than you would ever imagine. God will take that one small word help and when he got get through analyzing it and picking through it and start dealing with what you really need with that request, he knows how to provide. Amen. He speaks to us through his word. He speaks to us through his spirit. He speaks to us through prayer. And the prayer that we pray to God, let me tell you what's so spectacular about him is you can have a verbal dialogue with God or you can have just the sharing of your innermost thoughts and feelings in depths of your spirit when you can't find words to say. You don't know what to say. And let me tell you something that I know I know some of you may not be like, but let me tell you something. Sometime, sometime, look, no, not sometime, all of the time, God can read teardrops. <laughs> and he ain't got to send it to no lab. He just take your tears and analyze your tears and he knows how to bring healing through your tears when you don't know what to say. All you can do is fold your hands and cry. <laughs> and let me just share with you, let me share with you today that that, 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 that he knows our feeling because the Bible says that all of the stuff that we go through, how he understands it, because he went through it before we did. <laughs> through God's word, through God's spirit, through prayer, we are no longer victim to our own weakness. You're strong in the Lord. You're strong through prayer because through prayer we can claim and we can cultivate his indwelling presence and live not only in our power but through the power of Christ that lives in us if it had not been for the Lord. I prayed with some folks on the telephone last night, not even a part of this city. 
and, and in so many words they were saying, Reverend, you sure God would do this? I said, let me confirm my statement. I'm sure he'll do it is because it was no later than 12 o'clock yesterday that he did it for me. And if he do it for me, I know he'll do it for you. It's because God is not partial. God has no respect of person. All he wants us to do is cry out. Have you ever been in trouble? It's all right to say yes. Have you been in trouble? Have you had hardships? Have you been hurt? Have your heart ever bleed, bled for, for, for a loved one or loss of a loved one? Have you ever been in a tight spot? God says, I understand all of it. Even your financial condition, God is concerned about it. And you know, and, and some folks say, you mean tell me God is concerned about my financial condition? Yes, I read in the New Testament when it was time for uh, uh, the disciples to pay their tax and they didn't have no money. Y'all read that? They didn't have no money. And they went to Jesus and said, Lord, now we with you. And we ain't. We ain't fished in a long time. We ain't raised no money to pay our taxes. What we going to do? He didn't say, oh, I'm God. They ain't going to bother you. I'm God. You with me. I got your back. No, he didn't. Let me tell you what he told them. He said, I want you to go cast uh, your line in the sea. And he said, the first fish you catch, he said, I want you to catch it and open his mouth. And inside the fish mouth gonna be enough money to pay our tax. And you know what I want to talk about after I get through talking about what I'm talking about because this is what I gotta talk about because this is what he told me to talk about. Let's go fishing. So the idea of this, God is concerned about the little bitty stuff. The little struggles of our life. And through prayer, we can claim that power. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In other words, when I looked up this big word, Finally, he says to the church at Ephesus, rest. Finally, he says, just lay back. Stop depending on your own strength. Now, for those of you who don't understand that old plain laid back, chill. God's got your back. Paul is already talking about heavenly calling. He's already talked about earthly conflict. He's already talked about spiritual conflict, earthly conduct. Then he says, Finally, out of all of the stuff, out of all of the stuff about what God would have us to do out of the earthly conduct of how we ought to uh, present ourselves and how we ought to act and the spiritual conflict that we're going to face with one another through Lucifer and his agents. Finally. That's what I say to someone today that's watching by way of technology. That's what I'm saying to you as a congregation uh, that has gathered here so faithfully 
week after week to hear a word from the Lord. This is what I'm saying to people who have been challenged by uh, the challenges over the last year and a half of how we going to make it and all of the different uh, uh, forms of information that we are getting about where we are and where we headed and what we got to do and what we don't do and how they're vacillating back and forth about you can do this and no you can't. Finally, be strong in the Lord. The Lord's power, the strength of God's spirit and the force of biblical truth are required for victory. Finally. He tells us in this same text, whatever you do, stand. Don't, don't, don't give in. Stay. Don't, don't waver. Stay. And the idea of it is, what he mean by stand? He's not talking about trying to be some robust individual. He's saying, hold your hopes. Remain in your faith. Don't waver. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Listen, we are as strong as what we trust. Think about that. When our faith is in God and in his power and in his strength, through my faith, his power and his strength becomes my power and my strength. It's because what he does, he pours himself in me because the Bible says listen the just shall live by faith then when you continue to read the rest of the chapter that I'm not going to go through because I don't want to depress you and I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to abuse time, which the scripture never abused time. Uh, we just we just want to start on time, get out on time. He talks to us about our enemy. You can read it. They're everywhere. Talks to us about our energy, where we should get our strength from. Then he closes talking about the equipment that we should have in order to fight the battle. Now you got to be well dressed for this spiritual warfare. I mean, I mean, I mean, don't, I mean, don't step out in this battle with no kulaks and dashikis. I mean, I don't even know what that means. I don't know where I got that from. I hope I didn't say nothing wrong. You got to be well dressed. You got, look, you got to have, you have to have uh, uh, your lawns girded. You got to have on a breastplate of righteousness. You got to have your shoes of the gospel and you got to have the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. But whatever you do before you try to tackle anything, get in the briefing room. 
And you say, well, what is the briefing room, preacher? The briefing room is where you and God get in the closet and y'all have a little talk with Jesus. Because the briefing room is where we have direct communication with our commanding officer at all times. And wherever he tells us to go and whatever he tells us to do, he'll lead us and he'll see us through it. Because let me tell you this. Let me tell you this before I walk off this stage. Prayer unleashes the power of God in our lives. It sets, it sets, it sets the power of God free. And you know what he said? You know what he said? You have not. Because you ask not. He said, whatsoever that you ask in my name, I will do it. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? He's in charge, brothers and sisters. He's our commanding chief. He's already won all the victory for us. And we have victory in Jesus. And I was wondering. I was wondering. I, I prayed last night. I prayed this morning. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And sometimes we just have to let go and let God say, Lord, I said, I know I have a good message because you gave it to me, but how in the world can I wrap it up to where it makes sense? And I want to thank uh, Sister Cheyenne. Uh, I didn't know she could hoop. <laughs> because this is my hoop. My hoop is today, there's victory in Jesus, is because better day. Somebody, look, you don't even know when to get happy, even in COVID. Better days are coming. All we got to do is trust God. Whatever you're going through, he tells us, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord because better days are coming. It may not be what you want it to be, but better days are coming. Let's go to the house. It may not turn out the way you think it ought to turn out, but better days are coming. That's what we got to do. We got to encourage one another. Stop trying to give folks advice to prove how smart you are, how educated you are in certain fields. And just go to verse 1, verse 10, I mean, of Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, my brother. If you can't remember that part, just tell them, baby, be strong. But don't be strong in yourself. Be strong in the Lord. Oh, I feel so much better. I got that pressure off of me. I'm, I feel so much better. I've encouraged this congregation and those viewers. I feel so much better to tell everybody. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm, just put me in there. Put the whole congregation in there. Whatever you're going through, Jesus Christ paid the price on Calvary. He fixed it on resurrection morning. And the power of his Holy Spirit rests in us. Ask God. Whatever you're going through, better days. I don't know when it's going to be, but I assure you, 
Boy, ain't that pretty. Come on, deacon. The door of the church. I didn't say doors. Because it's not for one. It's a marvelous change. It's a golden opportunity. Come on, come on. With everything, say it to yourself. I declare that's the truth. Someone trying to make up your mind Whether you are viewing by way of technology There's a spot on the green screen to where you can fill out information And we'll contact you And we'll talk to you We'll counsel you We'll pray with you Yes Better day. Lord, that's the truth. Better day. And that's the word of the Lord. That's not words from somebody with a decree, or that's not words with someone that we pay to give us advice. That's the divine, inerrant word of God. That's a promise. That if you share these words with your family, with your loved ones, with your friends, with your neighbors, be strong in the Lord. Because better days are coming. All minds clear. Lord, I want to thank you personally for giving me the preaching strength. Thank you for your spirit encouraging me. Thank you for the receptive ears that have listened to this word and we know that it would not come back void. Whatever the needs might be in this congregation, whatever the needs might be through our viewers that's watching through technology, as they trust you, dear Lord, we pray that you would release your power, your strength, to assure them that better days are coming. We don't know when, we don't know exactly where, but we're trusting and depending on you. Now we ask your grace, your love, and your mercy forever keep watch over each of us. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.